when I started this channel and started producing content at the beginning of this year, which is 2024, my main left and right speakers were some DCM time frame 600 speakers. And I have a couple videos here on my channel that will be linked up in the corner about those speakers, some different things I did with them, how I got them, whatever. They were a much older speaker and they were generally considered more like a house speaker for two channel listening because they were really developed and created before modern home theater kind of came into the mainstream. And so those speakers, while they were nice, they worked for what I wanted them, you know, to do. They had a fair amount of clarity and punch and just balanced sound and everything. They were nice, but the problem was they were really big and they took up a lot of space in the way my room here is set up. They kind of got in the way of people walking in and out of the front door that's off to the side over here. Even though they were kind of cumbersome and in the way, I really like the audio quality, the sound quality that came out of them. And I really wasn't looking to get rid of them or find something new. But if you've watched my channel over the time it's been up here on YouTube, I generally will browse various websites like Shop Goodwill, Goodwill Finds, eBay, Mercari, Facebook Marketplace, all those usual sites. And I will just constantly browse them and have different searches saved and keywords saved to just kind of like see different options as they pop up to see what's out there. And that is how I stumbled across the speakers that are currently here in my home theater for my main left and right channel. And those are the Angstrom Audio Suono Sonata 100 speakers. I know it, it's a mouthful. I basically was just looking around browsing like I always do and just searched speakers or home theater speakers, whatever the, the case was at the time, and stumbled across this listing for three of these Angstrom Audio Sonata speakers. And I was intrigued by them, and then I kind of did a little bit of research and tried to look them up and see kind of, you know, what their story was, their specs, things like that. Ultimately, I put a bid in on them. No one really outbid me on it and I won the auction. I purchased these speakers on Shop Goodwill for $78 <laughs> plus shipping. Uh, the shipping and handling was like another $25, $30. So all in, I paid about $100, a little more than $100 for the set of three of the speakers that was listed on Shop Goodwill. Now these speakers are a little different for front channel speakers than what I've had here in the past because these are on wall speakers. And I typically have always had either bookshelf or tower speakers in the front of my home theater. I did go through a little period of time where I used tower speakers uh, years and years ago for my rear and surround channels. But more recently, since my home theater has been set up the way it's been like this for the last couple years, I've basically exclusively used on-wall speakers for the rear channels. And that started with my Polk Audio speakers I used, and more recently when I found my JBL cinema speakers that are now my rear channels. I was really anxious just to see what they actually sounded like, because like I said, I've never used on-wall speakers for the front stage of my home theater. So these speakers are a little bit older, but they are definitely newer than my DCM speakers. My DCM speakers were at least 30 or more years old, if I remember correctly. Uh, these are from right around 2009, 2010, uh, right in that kind of time frame from looking online. So these are really about 15 years old, give or take. So they're a lot newer than the DCMs I had here. But like I was saying, these are on wall speakers. And if you turn these around, hopefully you can see on here, these come with a bracket that is already installed on the rear of the speaker. If you would have bought these brand new, there would have been a secondary bracket that you would have bolted onto the wall that would have actually connected securely on here as like a two piece bracket set. However, these, since I bought them used, did not have that. It only has the initial bracket that was uh, attached to the actual speaker. So these speakers are a two way design speaker. Um, I don't wanna remove the sleeve because it's a real pain to try and get this on and off here. And so I don't really wanna mess with it, but this is a two way design. So you have a woofer right around in this spot here. You have a tweeter right here, and then another woofer right up here. And these are not ported or anything like that. 
And because they're meant to be on the wall, they have their connectors at the bottom, which is uh, a little bit different than most speakers. Normally you would see them on the back, you know, of the speaker, probably like in this area or in the middle. But since these are meant to actually hang on a wall, they have them on the bottom so that the connectors don't stick out and cause issues with actually mounting it. So these speakers are really well built. Uh, they're solid wood. You could probably hear that. I mean, this is solid wood that's in here. These weigh about 10 pounds a piece. They're only a couple ounces under 10 pounds. They're like nine pounds, eight or nine ounces. They're really close to 10 pounds. Uh, they're not as heavy as say my JBL cinema speakers that are in the back. Those are like 12 or 13 pounds, so they're a few pounds heavier. But for their size, they're actually really well built in uh, really good construction quality and components in here. So when these speakers first came out, they were actually marketed as a higher end kind of upscaled home theater in a box kind of system. It didn't really come with a receiver, but it came with the speakers and a subwoofer. And these Sonata 100 speakers were actually marketed and initially constructed to be the rear channels in the 5.1, well, technically 4.1, which I'll get to in a second. But they were initially made and built to be the surround speakers in that surround sound setup that they were initially uh, kind of bundled in with. And then there were bigger speakers you could buy that would be the front channels that went along with this. Uh, at the time, they were a little different than what they are nowadays for Angstrom Audio. If you go to their website and look, the uh, speakers are slightly different, but essentially they had, I believe like a 300 series and like a 600 series at the time when these first ones came out. Initially, the set you would have purchased would have had two of these Angstrom Audio 100 series speakers. They would have been your surround speakers. And then you would have had two of the Angstrom Audio 600 series speakers. Those speakers are much larger than these. They're still the same width and same depth as these 100 speakers, but they are much, much taller. The weird kind of catch with those 600 speakers that were initially paired with this, it's a 4.1 speaker system that you would have bought at the time, but it would have been a 5.1 sound system which may sound kind of confusing. And the reason that is, is that those 600 speakers had a second set of drivers in them outside of the normal woofer and tweeter that would give you your left and right channel. They had a second set of drivers on each one of those speakers that would give you a phantom center channel. Uh, kind of image that would come out of them. Now, I obviously don't have those larger speakers here to show you in person, but from reading online, the way it was set up, it would have the standard woofer, tweeter, woofer configuration. And then at the very top, it would have a second set of drivers that would be towards the inside of the speaker. And those would basically be angled just slightly. And that would be where the phantom center image would kind of come out of the speaker and it would process all that internally in the speaker. So you didn't have to run separate speaker wires or separate inputs, outputs out of your receiver. You would still just connect your normal left and right uh, audio inputs on the two speakers. And then the speaker itself would process that phantom center for home theater content. And it would just come out of these secondary drivers that were built into that speaker. And that initial set you would have purchased at that time would have also come with a subwoofer, uh, which I don't have much info on to be completely honest, I didn't really research that. But it would have come with a subwoofer. And at the time, from what I can gather on the internet, through an old Sound and Vision kind of review that was on there, that set was almost like $3,000 for that set at the time when it came out in like 2009, 2010. So these speakers were considered like extremely high quality at the time. So that's kind of like the background info and how I got these speakers and just some information about how they were produced initially. But the main point of this video, to anyone who's probably interested in something like this, is how do these speakers sound and then how did I actually mount them since I don't have the other bracket that would have normally gone with these speakers to begin with. So let's start with that second question first before we get into the actual audio quality. So what I did initially to mount these is that I measured my screen height 
and found just slightly above the center point to match up the tweeter on the speaker. And then I looked to the left and right where I had my DCMs originally on the wall, found the stud with my stud finder, and just took a small piece of leftover scrap wood uh, that's like a one by two, I believe, or a one by one uh, that I had from several years ago when I built my little kind of like audio dampening pad things for my subwoofers. And I just cut them to a little bit bigger than the width of this speaker and screwed them into the stud and secured them, made sure they were level. And then I was just able to sit the speaker on top of it. And what it basically did is it created a groove for the metal bracket kind of into that wood. So it, you know, I pushed down so that it would kind of get lodged in there. And then it just ever so slightly angled back a little bit so that the bottom hit the wall. And it does, you know, kind of tilt the speaker slightly, but it's not tilted enough that the audio is going straight into the floor. It really keeps the sound stage uh, how it's supposed to be. And so that's the basic DIY thing that I did. And I need to paint the little pieces of wood black. Uh, I didn't do that initially because I wanted to make sure they were set up properly. And if I had to move them, you know, I didn't want to like paint them first. I was going to wait till they were on the wall to paint them. But now that they're up there, I've had them up for a few months and everything seems to work uh, normally without any issues. I think I, I'll probably go in and paint them so they blend in uh, so that you don't see the little corners sticking out. That's how I mounted them. But again, I think a lot of people want to know how do these sound? So these speakers are not made to be full range speakers. They're not. They're made to be used in a home theater environment with subwoofers. So these are dedicated home theater speakers. They can work for music. I've listened to some music and different things with them, but that's not really their strong suit. Their strong suit is really movies, TV shows, video games, you know, anything that would be home theater content where you have a center channel, rear channels, you have a subwoofer that can fill in the, the lower end on things, and that these speakers are not required to try and be a full range speaker. So the main positives of these speakers are gonna be the mid-range and upper ranges of the audio you'd be listening to. Uh, they're not overly fatiguing or harsh. Uh, they're very neutral sounding. They're just extremely clear and clean, and you can pick out a lot of details in the audio that you're listening out of these. Like I said a second ago, these are not full range speakers. They don't have a whole ton of bass. There is some there. So if you have a deeper voice talking that's maybe panning off to the side or something that's a little bit lower register there, it can give you some of that, you know, so it's not completely devoid of a lower range in the actual audio quality, but you're not gonna get extremely deep bass. You're not gonna get an extremely full range kind of image coming out of these speakers. They're really made for, like I said, home theater. But the audio's clean, the audio's clear. They're not fatiguing, they're not harsh, they're not overly boosted on the upper ends or in the mid range. You get a very neutral, just kind of plain sound signature, which is something I like because I want to hear things like it's kind of intended. You know, I don't really want to have uh, boosts or subtractions on the audio image. You know, I want to actually hear what was recorded there, and then if I want to make changes, I can do that through post processing, through my AVR or whatever. So these are very neutral, very clear. They really do a good job, and, and they do such a good job that my wife really enjoyed them when we would watch content and listen to stuff down here, whether it was movies, TV shows, whatever. And she liked the fact that these were a lot smaller and they were on the wall so that when people were walking in and out of my home theater, because my door is right off to the side here, they don't really protrude out to where people are gonna knock into them and bump them and everything like they did with my DCM speakers. Because my DCM speakers were really right up to the door frame. So as people would walk in, if they weren't paying attention, they could bump into those and either just knock them, you know, kind of off their axis a little bit. Uh, and thankfully this never happened, but if you hit it hard enough, those DCMs could have just tipped over and fallen down. So I was actually kind of lucky that didn't happen, but my wife was really, 
uh, happy with the sound quality and also the fact that they were able to hang on the wall and kind of stay out of the way and kind of just blend into the front space. You don't even really know they're there all that much. So ultimately, since these sounded just as good as my DCMs, maybe not as much bass, but you know, still had a decent amount of mid-range and upper range in the audio and it wasn't muddied, it was clear. You take that, you couple it with the fact that they're a lot smaller footprint, that they're not going to get in the way where people are going to knock them down and you can put them on the wall and really just have them blend into the front stage and they kind of disappear. Because of all that, I ended up keeping these and ended up selling my DCM speakers. That was one of the reasons I went to the record exchange and did that video a few months ago when I went down there and talked to Gene and Jenna at the record exchange. The big reason we were going down there outside of shooting the content was for me to trade in those speakers. Which by the way, that's an extremely popular video on my channel, but if you haven't seen it, I will link it up here for anyone who's interested. So at the end of the day, I'm extremely happy about this purchase for basically a hundred dollars for the three speakers these are really good quality and that was a really good bargain a really good deal that i got on them because these speakers don't come up very often they come up very very sporadically there is currently a set of angstrom audio 300 speakers which are a little bit bigger than these on ebay right now for one pair they're like six or seven hundred dollars. They're extremely expensive. Plus shipping is probably going to be quite a bit too because they're so big and bulky. Now one other thing you could do with these speakers is just a little side note and I think this is why there's three in this set when I bought it from Shop Goodwill is you could use these as a left, a center, and a right and have a universal sound stage between the three of them. And I actually thought about potentially doing that with these. Uh, because I bought these right after I made my DIY projector screen, which is sitting here behind me. The problem is these are just a little bit too thick. And if I would have known at the time I was going to buy these before I ventured into making that screen that's up there behind me, I may have bought the frame wood to be thicker, to be like a two by four or a two by six or something instead of a two by two so that that would have accounted for the width of this speaker. And what I could have done is actually sat this right dead center in the middle in line with the other two and built the screen around this with enough gap that this could have sat back there. And I effectively could have had a center channel directly behind the screen and mounted up to ear height to where I wouldn't have to sit my center channel below the screen and angle it upwards. That would have been nice to have, but ultimately these speakers popped up and I bought these after I built that screen. And honestly, I'm not going to tear that screen down and have to rebuild it and change everything around just to accommodate this one speaker. And my Infinity Beta Center is actually a really good center channel. So I have a feeling I would probably lose some audio quality going to this over that, but it's kind of apples and oranges, you know, it's six of one half dozen of another, like what do you want to get out of that? And I may have done it if I hadn't have built my screen yet, but since the screen was already on the wall, I kept it kind of the way it is. And basically this one is just a spare speaker to have in case one of these other ones goes out or gets damaged or something happens to it, I have a spare to replace it with. Uh, that's just some background info and a little bit about these Angstrom Audio speakers. Uh, Angstrom Audio is still around. They still make these style of speakers nowadays. They're just an updated version, but these are a really good set of speakers. They don't pop up very often. They're kind of hard to come by, and I'm extremely glad that I picked these up. So, like I always say, Thank you to everyone who's watched my content and left a comment, left a like. I really do appreciate it. If you do like the content I create here, definitely consider liking and subscribing to my channel. It really does help me out. I really do appreciate it. And with that, I'm going to say thank you again. I will see you the next time in the next video here on Secondhand Home Theater. Thank you.